Real quick before we get started, special thanks to Dr. Lockdown for being my first patron on Patreon. If you want to get special perks such as DMs with me or two-day early access to reviews, then go over to Patreon and, well, sign up. Now, on to today's episode. Read the disclaimer. Doofus. So, it's no secret that 2020 has been far from a great year. And, uh, anyone who said something along the lines of what I said at the beginning of the year, now, of course, now that the 2010s have come and passed, let's try and make 2020 as great as we possibly can. Kinda feels a little stupid right now. And this year has brought me to the brink of something that I never thought I'd be on the brink of doing. Deleting this channel. Yeah, my emotional state got to such a point during my hiatus this year that I was on the verge of deleting the channel and just giving up collecting altogether. But honestly, that would have been a bit short-sighted. And it wouldn't have been fair to anyone who has been following me this whole time and been liking my videos and sharing them. So I'm sticking around for all of you. Having said that, it doesn't really help that this year, generations plummeted to new lows with the Earthrise line. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not as low as the absolutely abysmal entries in Power of the Primes, and also Fall of Cybertron, but Earthrise exhibits a very, very massive flaw that Dr. Lockdown has coined the term Earthrise laziness to describe. Examples of Earthrise laziness can be found in everything from the obvious, such as the Earthrise Seeker mold, to things that are middling in their obviousness, such as Earthrise Megatron, to things that you really, really wouldn't expect, such as Earthrise Snapdragon. But that is besides the point. Today we're going to talk about a figure that actually brought me back into Transformers before I was lost forever. Which is to say, salutations, denizens of the internet! I'm Firebite27, and let us commence our analysis of Studio Series SS65, Blitzwing. In his vehicle mode, Blitzwing turns into a McDonnell Douglas F4 Phantom... Wait... This doesn't look a damn thing like the F4 Phantom. It doesn't even look like a pantomime phantom. Phantomime? Oh, great. Yet more lukewarm wordplay. Oh hey, Maya! You're back! This might be an awkward way to reintroduce you, but do you happen to have any insight on why this doesn't look like an F4 Phantom? They probably could not get the trademark to the real alternate mode. That or the license expired. That's probably accurate. At least it looks like a real-world plane, despite the fact that it was literally pulled out of the designer's ass. Really wish I could say the same of some figures from the Earthrise line, though. Now, y'all should know that I'm the last person to give a flying f about accuracy, but in this case, considering Studio Series usually does vehicle mode accuracy, it's kinda sorely missed that this is not the F4 Phantom. And I'm not even a big, like, vehicle mode buff like Cybertronian Blacksmith with the lazy eyebrow. Of course, the red stripes on the wings provide a great deal of the accuracy to the, well, I say accuracy, but it's more realism to the design, because, again, the designer pulled it out of their ass. And unlike a lot of the Seekers I own, the half-spray effect with the paint is absolutely beautiful and it provides more realism to this design. And of course, now that I've mentioned that I have other Seeker molds, I feel obligated to compare them to this mold. Because, yes, it is still based on the G1 Seeker, despite the fact that Blitzwing was not a Seeker in G1. I mean, the Cloud Seeker was kind of a thing, but let's not talk about that for too long. Here's Blitzwing next to the Universe mold, and, um, yeah, I'd have to say that I prefer the Blitzwing mold over this one, mostly because, well, it's got the better paint job. Here's the figure next to the Siege Tetradets, and, um, well, while I'd still say that the Blitzwing mold is a superior figure, the Siege Tetradet is a close second for its articulation, which we'll get to later, and also for its battle damage. Here it is next to Starscream, and yeah, I can say with all confidence that this is superior to Starscream. 
mostly because it's not a blown up mold the, that already existed. Here he is next to Earthrise Dirge, and honestly, this is half of the reason why I consider the figure to be the best seeker in my collection. Nothing on Studio Series Blitzwing has been taken or ripped off of an earlier figure, and just blown up to a bigger size. It's totally original and totally unique. And I can basically say the same thing about Ramjet because, well, they're both Earthrise Seekers and they're both equally lazy. Though, I'll save my reasons behind why I think they're lazy for my Conehead video, which will hopefully come at the end of the year, or Christmas, or hopefully sooner. The point that I'm trying to stress here is that I like this figure for what it does differently from any other Seeker I have. And just for the sake of size comparisons, here he is next to Siege Afterglow. Speaking of size comparisons, here he is next to my last review, Cyberverse Hammerbite, his rival, Off-Road Bumblebee, a standard Kutama, a standard can of sparkling water, and Fraudside. So overall, Blitzwing's jet mode, despite a lack of accuracy, or lacuracy, is really, really cool, and it's super realistic, despite the fact that, again, pulled right out from between the designer's butt cheeks. Now then, Blitzwing, transform! Right off the bat, I feel obligated to cover a consistent issue with this figure, and that is the fact that the backpack likes to come untabbed at a moment's notice. This wouldn't really be an issue if it weren't for the fact that the shoulder joints that are attached to the backpack are incredibly tight. Oh, please don't get me wrong, tightness in and of itself isn't bad. But when the tightness is also paired with very shallow pegs, the end result is that you have a Seeker that's constantly trying to go Action Master on your ass. But to further that end, this figure does have some absolutely fantastic articulation. Just pair it with any jaunty music as per your liking, and... Okay, I'm cutting that gag off before the copyright claim cops come around. Anyways, Blitzwing has one articulated hand, and that is so you can grab B-127's neck in order to recreate that one scene from the movie. And if the fact that I decided not to replicate the scene wasn't a dead giveaway, unfortunately, my Blitzwing cannot hold B-127 by the neck, which makes the other two accessories that he comes with from that scene in the movie completely and utterly pointless. Now, according to a few of my friends who already own these figures, apparently this is a mileage may vary type scenario, and the plastic tolerances will be the key factor in deciding whether or not you can actually hold B-127 by the throat. But on the plus side, at least it adds to the range of articulation that you can get out of the figure. Which is, again, really impressive. But now, unfortunately, I must return to doing more comparisons. Here he is next to Acid Storm, and yeah, I still think that Acid Storm is a little bit inferior. He ranks third place in the Seeker race, mostly because he has better paint in robot mode than Blitzwing. Blitzwing's paint isn't bad, but I would have preferred if the lower legs had gotten a bit more paint and care. Then in second place again, we have Thundercracker, again because he has better articulation. Now then, don't get me wrong, on paper, Blitzwing should have an identical level of articulation to Thundercracker, in fact, he should have more. But, the thing that holds him back is that the waist swivel is non-functional. Seriously, I've tried turning it as hard as I can, hasn't budged an inch. Studio Series Starscream scores a fourth place because of his articulation and the fact that I like this figure and it was one of the first figures I got when I was in collecting. Dirge comes in fifth, mostly because, well, he's a conehead and it, again, as I said, it's really a lazy mold because it's ripping off the classics version. And Ramjet comes in dead last because I don't really like his color scheme. Though, I do prefer the jet mode on him to Dirge. Having said that, at least Ramjet came with the good graces to not have a screaming face to pair with the blast effect nubs on his nipples. My nipples explode with the light! 
Anyways, here he is next to Bumblebee, a standard Kutama, a standard can of sparkling water, and Fraud Side, and Afterglow for size comparisons. So, overall, I'd have to say that Blitzwing is truly something special. He's comparable to the original SS38 Optimus Prime in that he is a unique idea, that being a G1-ish Bay vs. Starscream slash Seeker mold with amazing articulation and an amazing design and an amazing transformation, even though I didn't really get to go in depth on it. But overall, you'd be crazy not to buy this. So, does SS65 Blitzwing belong in your collection? Yes. But if you want a longer explanation of why, the figure occupies a very similar headspace to SS38 Optimus Prime, in that it's an often trodden vehicle mode with a unique idea in mind, that being a Bayversified Seeker that actually still looks like Starscream and the Seekers in G1 somewhat, mixed not so perfectly on the engineering level, but executed to the highest degree, and it just... the end result is just really good. Having said that, I can't say that it's 100% perfect, mostly because of this untabbing issue, but I think I'd be comfortable saying that this is the first time I ever feel 100% comfortable buying multiple of the same figure if it came out in different color schemes if it was specifically this mold. Can't really say that of the Earthrise mold or any of the other copies of the Seeker molds that I've bought multiple versions of, but this is the first time in forever that I think I might actually want a Skywarp, a Starscream, and a Thundercracker of it. Maybe even a Thrust, a Dirge, a Ramjet, I don't know. I just like more versions of this. So unfortunately, even though I really like the figure, I unfortunately have to give it an imperfect score of a 9.5 out of 10. And yes, I am very aware of the fact that that is high praise considering the fact that the untabbing thing is a bigger issue than I'm kind of making it out to be. But at the same time, I really want to praise this figure for what it does right, even if that does end up costing me a few negative comments. And with that being said, this is Firebite27, over and out. And don't forget to check out the Patreon so you can get two days early access to my next review.